Territory in Pennsylvania comes the Senor Fancy Pants Show, a podcast with over one million fans. Most of them just haven't discovered the show yet. Please give it up for your host, Senor Brian Fancy Pants. Oh, wow. Thank you. This is so unexpected. All right, you can have a seat now. And hello to you, the coolest podcast audience in the universe. Thanks for joining us once again here on the Senor Fancy Pants Show. We are now at episode 14. And by the way, I really like that shirt you're wearing. All right, as usual, I'm here with my amazing co-host, Lincoln. What's up, fancy fans? So, Lincoln, I have been thinking a lot about something lately. That's good. Yeah, it is. I've been thinking about something that the world could really use more of. What do you think it is? Tacos? No, we've got plenty of those, luckily. Politics? No, we have way too much of that. Gravy? No, but that's pretty close. I'm talking about kindness. Yeah. Now, I've been thinking about just how powerful kindness can be. And I was recently watching a TV show documentary about a guy who traveled all over the world on a motorcycle and he survived by relying on the kindness of strangers. He wasn't allowed to spend any money, so while he was traveling, he needed other people to give him food and a place to sleep for the night. And of course, he also needed gas for his motorbike. It was really cool to see that almost every night, he was able to find a place to stay, and he never went hungry. He also got to meet a lot of amazing, incredible people. And many times, the people that were the most kind and the most generous were people that really didn't have a lot themselves. It was a great show, and it was a great reminder to me that I could be doing more to help others. So for you adults out there that might want to check out the show I'm talking about, it's called The Kindness Diaries, Season 1. What do you think, Lincoln? Do you want to ride around on a motorbike and stay at strangers' houses? Nope. All right, that's fine. You don't have to. Anyway, those of us that pay attention to the news often see a lot of negative or bad stuff going on going on in the world and now while it's important to be aware of that stuff it's also important to make sure that we pay attention to the good things that are happening around us and to make sure that we are spreading kindness and positivity now one thing i love about my co-host lincoln is that he's a very kind person thank you you're welcome see lincoln cares about other people and it gets him kind of upset when he sees other people behaving negatively towards others. Would you agree with that, Lincoln? Yep. Yeah, I kind of feel the same way. I don't like seeing people upset. I don't like seeing people behave negatively. So one thing that we did for this episode was ask some people if they could think of an act of kindness that someone did for them that they've never forgotten about. So here's just a couple of them. Emily said that when she lived in Germany, she was driving and hit a pothole that popped her tire and bent the rim. And she didn't know what to do, so she just left the car in her parking spot and decided that from now on she would just start walking places. But one day, Emily came home to find that her German neighbor was replacing the entire wheel on her car. How cool is that? And he didn't even charge her for it. He just saw the need and took care of it. And after that, her neighbor invited her and her son to have dinner with him and his wife every Friday night after. So... She says it's the nicest thing that anyone has ever done for her. And David said that this past summer, the roof over his porch became severely damaged, and he didn't have time to do anything about it. One night, he came home to find that one of his good friends was coming down the ladder from his roof. His friend had just fixed the damaged roof for him, and he wouldn't accept any payment for the job. That's a really good friend. Now, not every act of kindness has to be a big gesture like the ones we heard in those two stories. Sometimes it can just be small things. For instance, Holland wrote, A few years ago on Valentine's Day, a customer at the store she worked at gave her $5 because he overheard her saying that she somehow needed to get cash so that she could ride the bus. And the customer gave her the money as a tip and said, Happy Valentine's Day. That's very nice. And then there's Kirsten, who said that one time a worker at Burger King gave her extra onion rings because she was sad. That's really nice. Don't you think, Lincoln? Yeah. Yeah, extra onion rings are always nice. But there you have it. Sometimes kindness is fixing a roof. Sometimes it's just free onion rings. 
The point is, kindness makes the world better, and often even our smallest acts of kindness can make a big difference. Now, speaking of awesome people that are kind, it's time for a segment that is sponsored by my friend Keith Brockway. It's time for... Keith Brockway's Question of the Day. Keith Brockway's Question of the Day. Today's question was specifically for our grown-up listeners, and it goes a little something like this. What was your dream job when you were a kid, and what is your dream job now? And the bonus question for parents was, what do your kids want to be when they grow up? Now, we got a lot of great answers, so there's no way we can get to all of them unless we want to make a two-hour podcast, but here are some of your answers. First, we got to do Keith Brockway's answer, of course. As a kid, Keith wanted to be an astronaut. Now, he would like to own a guitar shop or a comic book store. I don't see why he can't just combine them. A comic book guitar shop sounds awesome. Lindsay said her dream job as a kid was to be a toll booth worker. Interesting. Now she says her dream job would be to own her own specialty food shop. That sounds great. I love food. I don't love paying tolls though. Zach wanted to be an author when he was a kid and says that his dream job now is the job that he currently has, which is a creative arts director. He teaches drama. Melissa said she wanted to be a professional piano player when she was a kid, and now she would like to be an artist. One of her kids said they wanted to be either a paleontologist or a gymnast, and another one of her kids wants to be a WWE wrestler. Sounds cool. That does sound pretty cool. Luke wants to be an NFL football player, but don't worry. He has a backup plan just in case that doesn't work out, which is he would like to be an NBA basketball player. That's that's good thinking, Luke. That's a very practical backup plan. Good thinking. Tommy wanted to lead music at church when he was younger, and now he works for the Salvation Army and says that's his dream job. Tommy's son would like to be a video game designer, mostly because he just wants to play video games all day. Yeah, that sounds pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Rich Jones dreamed of being a professional wrestler as a kid, but now his dream job is to be a stand-up comedian. Come on, Rich. Everyone knows that stand-up comedy is fake. <laughs> David said he wanted to be a garbage man when he was a kid so that he could stand up on the back of the garbage trucks and ride them around, which does look pretty cool. But, uh, of course, that job is now referred to as a waste management professional or sanitation engineer. There you have it. But now Dave's dream job is to be a professional ballet dancer. All right, we have time to do... Let's just do a few more quick answers. Emily's dream job is to be a professional cosplayer and run an animal shelter on the side. Logan wants to be an ice cream taster for Ben and Jerry's. Now, I could get behind that. I might have to change my answer. That's really cool. Yeah. Good thinking, Logan. Jacob wants to be an astronaut. All right, that's an easy one to do. Um, Zine would like to perform commercial jingles. You know, those catchy songs that you hear on commercials? Zine would like to sing them. Good luck, Zine. Nick would like to host a TV show about burgers. That actually sounds cool, too. I might change my answer to that. That's fine. Burgers. Exactly. Good. That's a good point, Lincoln. <laughs> Thea... Do you hear me? Thea wants to run a theater and put on shows. And wouldn't you know it, the word Thea, the name Thea, is in theater. So it's destiny. Meg dreams of being a detective. That's cool. Yeah. Michael wants to be either a voice actor for puppets or an actor that interacts with the puppets. He must love puppets. Yeah, I guess you would have to. Sarah wants to be a Disney slash Pixar animator. Holland wants to be a voice actor for Disney. Well, that kind of goes together. Sarah and Holland should team up, go down to Disney, tell them they want some jobs. Yeah. All right, Lincoln, what's your dream job? A video game designer. Well, so that was I, that so was really quick. Video game designer. And why? Because I can um, work for Nintendo to make the next few Zelda games. The next few Zelda games? Yeah. All right, that would actually be really awesome, and you're really amazing at Zelda. We haven't told our listeners, but um, Lincoln has defeated what the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. You beat the game like twice already, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah, you're some kind of genius. I'm only in the beginning. Anyway, thank you for uh, giving us your answers. Oh, wait, I didn't tell them my dream job. Uh, when I was a kid, I wanted to be a rock star. 
Now, I'm not a rock star, at least not on this planet, but I am very happy with my life. I get to write and perform music, and I also get to make a podcast in an underground laboratory. How amazing is that? And best of all, I get to spend a lot of time with my family, which is my favorite thing to do. So thank you all for your answers. I'm sorry we didn't get to everybody because this podcast would be way too long. But uh, thanks to those of you who sent in answers. It was really cool to see all the different kinds of things that people are passionate about. But uh, I hope that all of you will find happiness in whatever you end up doing, even if it isn't necessarily your dream job. All right, now we're going to take a quick break and listen to an awesome song. I hope you're ready to rock, because here is Danny Weinkoff with his song... The moon is made of cheese. On July 16th, 1969, a rocket was sent into space. The astronauts and the cosmonauts were having a bit of a race. They said they were going to land a man on the moon. And you can believe what you please, but I don't. The name of the ship was Apollo 11 Yeah, there must have been 10 before One fella named Buzz and another named Neil Were the ones that chose for the job They said their plan was to go for a walk Maybe fly a little flag in the breeze But I don't care what the scientists say The moon is made of cheese Don't believe in no UFOs or little green men from space So when they talk about walks on the moon It just puts a smile on my face And when I'm watching those history shows It all seems so funny to me Cause I don't care what the scientists say The moon is made of cheese. Yeah, I don't know if that's true, but the song sure is cool. All right, it's time for our next segment. Lincoln, what are we doing next? Our place of the day. That's right. Today, our place of the day is a very peaceful country located in the Himalaya Mountains between India and China. It has an estimated population of around 823,000 people. I am talking about the great country of what? Bhutan! That's right. Here are a few facts about Bhutan. The capital of Bhutan is called Timpu. Timpu is home to somewhere between 100,000 and 115,000 people. An interesting fact about Timpu is it is the only capital city in the entire world that doesn't have a single traffic light. Bhutan's national sport is archery. And if you're playing against another team, you're supposed to yell stuff at them and try to throw them off. It's not considered rude or mean. It's just part of the fun. When someone offers you food in Bhutan, you have to pretend to refuse it. Yeah, if someone offers you food, it is polite to pretend that you don't want it. What you've got to do is you've got to cover your mouth with your hand and say, Mishu Mishu. And then the person will ask you again, and you just keep doing the same thing. But on the third time that they ask you, you're able to accept the food. That's just part of their culture. Bhutan doesn't record the birth dates of its citizens. Yeah, everyone just gets a year older at the beginning of each new year. They don't keep track of actual birthdays. I kind of like that. It makes it a lot easier to remember everyone's birthday. The official language of Bhutan is called Zonka. Yeah, so here's a quick Zonka lesson for all of you. The word hello is Kuzu Zongpo. Lincoln, can you say that? Kuzu Zongpo. Zongpo. <laughs> that was close. Kuzu Zongpo. Kuzu Zongpo. So next time you're in Bhutan, you can say hello to everyone. Just say Kuzu Zongpo. I mean, your conversations won't be very long, but it's better than nothing. In Bhutan, they value happiness more than money. Yeah, in Bhutan, they have an official policy that they call gross national happiness which they use to try and measure the happiness of their people. Most countries measure their success based on how wealthy they are. 
In Bhutan, they're more concerned with things like preserving tradition and taking care of the environment and stuff like that. And uh, this, of course, doesn't mean that everything's perfect, but it's a great concept. Bhutan is known as the land of the Thunder Dragon. That has to be the coolest nickname I've ever heard for a country. Uh, Bhutan earned that nickname because of the fierce thunderstorms that they get there. Bhutan has the highest unclimbed mountain in the world. When it's pronounced poorly, the name of that mountain is Gangkar Punsum. There are actually a lot of unclimbed mountains in Bhutan. They have such a deep respect for nature there, and also mountains of a certain height are considered sacred. All right, we've got time for one more fact, Lincoln. Bhutan is one of the last countries to have to have television. Yeah, up until 1999, Bhutan did not have TV. Now they do. They also have the internet there now. And it's going to be interesting to see if these things will have a positive or negative effect on their happiness. I should send an email to the king of Bhutan and see what he thinks about that. Anyway, Bhutan seems like a fascinating place, and I'd really like to visit there someday. I hope you enjoyed some of these facts about the great country of Bhutan. Put your boots on. Let's go to Bhutan We can meet the people They are so peaceful And they don't care as much about money As they do about happiness They value their traditions You can tell by the way they dress Put your boots on Let's go to Bhutan That song was brought to you by H2O. Do you like hydrogen? Yeah. Do you like oxygen? Yeah. Well, try combining two atoms of hydrogen with one atom of oxygen, and then you've got yourself a delicious beverage that I like to call water. water. Yeah. All right. Now it's time for our last segment of the day. What is it, Lincoln? Animals are cool. Here are some facts about one of them. Animals are cool. Here are some facts about one of them. Today's animal can be found in the mountains of Central and South Asia. And yes, that includes Bhutan. Today's animal is the snow leopard. Here are some quick facts about snow leopards. Snow leopards are solitary animals. Solitary means living alone. So you won't see a bunch of snow leopards hanging out having leopard parties. That's not a thing. Snow leopards have giant furry paws. Their paws act kind of like snowshoes, which is good since they live way up in the snowy mountains. Their paws also help to mute the sound of their movement so they can sneak up on their prey. Snow leopards have a big tail. Their tails help them with balance, and they can wrap it around themselves for extra warmth like a scarf or a blanket. They are also used to store extra fat, which is helpful if they haven't eaten anything in a while. Snow leopards can jump really far. They have super powerful legs and they can jump up to 50 feet, which is about 10 times their length. The world record for a human long jump is somewhere around 29 feet. Snow leopards have special noses. Yeah, their noses actually heat up the cold mountain air that they breathe so that the air is warm before it gets to their lungs. All right, we got time for two more facts, Lincoln. They have built-in camouflage. That's right, built-in camouflage. A snow leopard has light-colored fur with dark spots, and it really helps them to blend in with the rocky and snowy terrain up in the mountains. They can be very difficult to spot. All right, our final fact about snow leopards today is... They can't roar. They can purr, they can growl and hiss, but they do not roar. They have very small throats, so I guess that has something to do with it. All right, well, those are our animal facts for the day, so hopefully you learned at least one new thing about snow leopards. All right, we are almost to the end of episode 14 of the Senor Fancy Pants Show. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope that you had a good time, and hopefully you learned a little something as well. We're going to try really hard to get back on our schedule of putting new episodes out every two weeks, so please tell your friends to check out this show. As usual, we're going to end the show with one more awesome song. This last song is by a very talented singer-songwriter named Verid. Her latest album is called Songs for Sisters and Brothers, and it was one of my favorite family music albums of 2018. So here is a song from that album. It's called Little Bit Tough. Enjoy. 
I got a sister. Hey, sister. I got a brother. Hey, brother. Sometimes she knocks me down. Sometimes he knocks me down. But I know when I grow I'll be a little bit tough, be a little bit tough. I'll know how to stick up for myself. I'll be a little bit tough, be a little bit tough. I'll know how to stick up for myself. I got a brother. Hey, brother. I got a sister. Hey, sister. Sometimes he knocks me down. Sometimes she knocks me down. But I know when I grow I'll be a little bit tough, be a little bit tough. I'll know how to stick up for myself. I'll be a little bit tough, be a little bit tough. I'll know how to stick up for myself. I say my brother, he taught me well. My sister.